Hey, hey, heart fans. Thanks so much for tuning in. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below. That way we can be friends forever. I'm so excited. Title cards for animated projects. They're awesome. Now, obviously all of you out there have watched cartoons many, many times, I'm sure. If you're into this channel, you've obviously watched some of my animation, or maybe if you just stumbled on here, welcome. Good to have you here. So where did cartoon title cards originate? They've obviously been around for about 100 years, about as long as the process of animation itself. But it wasn't until the Walt Disney cartoons and the Max Fleischer cartoons came out in the very early days of animation that actual title cards were used to begin a cartoon. For example, all of the Mickey Mouse cartoons had Mickey Mouse's face. You know, the uh, Fleischer cartoons with Popeye the Sailor Man. I'm Popeye the Sailor Man! Boop. All those cartoons were great. They were like little mini movies. They, they just didn't start the cartoon. They had a title and they started listing the credits of people who worked on the show, which I think is extremely important. I've always been a very, very huge advocate of giving credit where credit is due, simply because I've been on the opposite end of that where I do a lot of work on a show and wouldn't get credit. And, um, you know, not mentioning the show or the people, but it's not fun to work really hard on something and they forget to give you credit or they give you credit, but it's really small at the end of the show. And that's fine, at least you're getting credit. But sometimes uh, network shows have to put so many shows on during the day, they won't even show the end credits. Or they'll show them while the show is still running, you don't even see them. So I'm a big fan of giving credit up front on the title card if we can. So title cards serve a couple purposes. They not only uh, give you the title <laughs> of the cartoon, title card. They uh, kind of give you a hint of what the cartoon's about, and they allow people to have their names credited up at the front, which I think is really, really great. And some of the best title cards and some of the most memorable ones are from Warner Brothers. Uh, I used to love the Looney Tunes cartoons. I see Bugs Bunny's face, and at the end you'd have Porky Pig going, bleep, bleep, bleep. that's all, folks. Uh, the, the end title cards are just as much fun, too. So doing title cards, to me, uh, is not only something that's necessary, it's something that should be treated just as seriously as the animated cartoon itself. For example, when we started doing Fairly Odd Parents, it was my chance to not only make a great show, but to make every part of the show fun. Like everything from the title sequence itself to the title cards themselves to the show itself, and then the end title card, and then the end theme music. Even the little cards at the end credits. If you watch in the early days of Fairly Odd Parents, you'll watch the show and you'll see like some cool drawings that are under the names of the people who worked on the show. I got that idea from watching years and years of Hanna-Barbera cartoons on ABC Saturday morning or NBC Saturday morning. Wherever Hanna-Barbera had a cartoon showing on Saturday morning, I would watch it. And uh, they had the names of the people and they'd have really cool drawings of the characters underneath the, um, the names. And I always, as a young artist, I would go like, wow, those drawings are better than the drawings in the show. <laughs> because the guys who actually designed the characters and had more time to draw one drawing would draw those drawings, while the animators who were so busy, in many cases overseas, not having a lot of time, the drawings in the actual cartoon wouldn't look so great. So that's why I love title cards. And for Fairly Odd Parents, we really wanted to make the title cards bright, wanted to make them fun, and I wanted every single episode to have its own title card. Like some shows you'll see will take one title card and that's the thing they use for everything. Every episode of that show has that title card. We did that on Tough Puppy. We wanted to try something different after Fairly Odd Parents and Danny Phantom, which I'll get into in a minute. Tough Puppy, we ended up, ha we wanted it to be like a secret agent's desk, so it was like a downshot of a desk. And every episode there'd be a file folder, like a, like a secret agent file, and it would open up and that'd be the name of the title. And then there'd be like some, uh, like little, you know, photographs paper clipped to the paper. And then there were characters that would be in that particular episode, like they were spy files or something. I thought that was really cool. So that made it a lot easier. But for Fairly Odd Parents, man, the artists who did those title cards were just second to none. They were just outstanding. And most of the guys and girls who designed Fairly Odd Parents characters and backgrounds would actually end up doing the title cards. And that was just a huge part of the process. It was just as important as, you know, writing the story, or doing the backgrounds or any other piece of the puzzle. So Fairly Odd Parents was just a blast. And then sometimes we'd get to animate our title cards, which was really, really cool. And I really loved doing that too because it just showed that we really took it seriously. I remember on uh, Channel Chasers, the whole title sequence was animated, which I thought was really fun. And also on Schools Out, the musical, that was an animated title sequence too. And I believe that was inspired by Monsters, Inc. Because Monsters, Inc. has a lot of the uh, very jazzy, very neon, art deco type of 1950s uh, looking uh, signs in it. And so Schools Out, the musical kind of did the same thing. We kind of borrowed a little bit from uh, Monsters, Inc., which was really cool. And so we just have a great time with the title cards. And then when you get to the Danny Phantom title cards, that was a whole level up. I mean, I really didn't know what to do with Danny Phantom at the time. And uh, we were gonna do, I wanted to do individual title cards for sure. 
but I wasn't really sure how to do it because Fairly Odd Parents, every title card looked different. They all looked like either some were bright and shiny, some were a little bit darker, some were. They were, they were basically telling the story of the episode in the title card without giving too much away. I treat title cards like comic strips where you have to make sure that the one picture tells a story. I challenge you out there, if you're an artist, I know you like to draw characters and figures and all that stuff and that's awesome, but can you put them in a scenario that people can understand the story in one drawing? Well, that's two, one drawing. Can you tell a story in one drawing? I always equate the title cards to movie posters. For example, one great movie poster, classic movie poster that tells the story in one picture is the poster for the movie Jaws. You can look at that poster you got it probably already pictured in your head. The giant shark, bigger than anything I've ever seen in my life, swimming up to this one little lady who's swimming on top of the surface. But that movie poster tells an amazing story. It's amazing. And uh, that's why movie posters are very important and they're not easy to do. See if you can take some of your characters and make them in the movie posters so that someone who looks at it can know exactly what the story is about. Or at least get a flavor of it and get curious and want to know more. It's letting the audience see something cool and getting them to want to know more. Speaking of which, Danny Phantom title cards. When I first started doing Danny Phantom, we had some really cool ideas in mind for title cards, but we weren't really sure how to go about them. We thought, well, it'll just be Danny, Sam, a ghost or whatever. But then two of our artists, uh, Ben Balistrieri and Steven Silver, they said, hey, we'd love to do these title cards like 1950s cheesy sci-fi horror movie posters. And I know that's a big, long description full of adjectives, but I think that's really, really cool. I was like, I get it. Okay, I get it. You know, Forbidden Planet and, uh, you know, The Day the Earth Stood Still and, you know, I was a teenage werewolf and those type of movies. It's like taking the flavor of those and putting them into a title card because Danny's all about ghosts and monsters and stuff. And these guys uh, and other people as well came up with some of the most creative, individual, as far as I'm concerned, stunning pieces of artwork for title cards I've ever seen. I would I would put those title cards in, in line with uh, with Disney artwork, or, or even, I'd put any of my uh, show's artwork up there with Disney artwork, uh, because I just, I respect the people who did it so much. But the Danny Phantom title cards are definitely um, in a class by themselves, I think. And that really shows, and people still talk about the title cards to this day. People ask me all the time, can you make Danny Phantom title card t-shirts? Pretty cool, isn't it? Uh, but I think the title cards are so cool, and they really, really not only help tell the story and tell what the title of the story is, they really add to the feeling of the story and they really add to the flavor. And I think it really creates an expectation with every episode like, hey, what's this episode going to be about? Or I can't wait to see the title card for this episode. Some people thought the title cards were even cooler than the episode sometimes, but you know, uh, to each their own. But I, I loved uh, the Danny Phantom title cards and uh, I'd love to see some artwork that you guys can do. If you guys can create a Danny Phantom title card for an imaginary Danny Phantom episode, that would be awesome. We should hashtag get uh, Danny Phantom title and uh, put on social media and I'll find it. Hashtag Danny Phantom title. We'll find those and we'll do a video out of those too. Okay? So that's like a brief history of title cards for me. They always tell a story. They should always look great and they should always leave the audience expecting something cool. So always remember that. Title cards are to be taken seriously. Like Patrick Swayze says to Jennifer Grey in Dirty Dancing, no one puts baby in a corner or no one puts title cards in a corner. Okay? Alright guys, thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. Don't forget to like and subscribe down below. Leave a comment in the comment section. And as always, Art gives you power. Use it wisely. Hey, Heart fans. Subscribe here to keep up with me, Danny, Timmy, Dudley, Bunsen, and the Noob Network, my new app full of cartoons, shows, and games. Download it here. Click over here to watch my most recent video and here to start a playlist related to this video. Whoa, check out that awesome fan art. To be featured here, use hashtag heartfanart and tag me. I'm on every social media platform known to man. Cartoon Butch out. Pencil drop.